my three-part OS 105 rebuild. So in the first part, I went over how to take the motor apart, how to get the bearings changed. On the part two, what we're gonna do is the, the reassembly, right? So I'm gonna be putting the connecting rod onto the piston, the ring on the piston, then I'm gonna install everything back um, into the crankcase with the new sleeve and button her up and, and then that's, that should be it. And then part three video is gonna be the HZR upgrade. So we're gonna be upgrading from a non-regulated to a regulated version of the OS Max 105. You could probably use this too. going in okay once the crank goes in all the way um, it'll sit right on that back bearing and it'll spin very smoothly okay see the cup lines up this is actually how it gets the air fuel mixture into the motor it creates that pressure right there from the cylinder going in and out all right, so here we go. Um, the oven trick, I do have to give props to uh, Rob McClellan. It was not my idea. He's the one who recommended it. And I've used it several times with great success. So thank you, Rob. Right. So what do we have here? We have a piston. Um, this actually doesn't have the ring. I took the ring out before, but it's all marred up. It was all actually bent too. Um, Actually, no, this, what was it? No, no, it wasn't this piston. I thought it was. I, I know there was a piston that was bent. But, um, yeah, this, this, you know, it, it skimmed the side of the liner. You can see there's a line here, and then that line disappears because it shaved it down. Um, not, not a good sign. Probably wouldn't reuse this. So to build the new piston ring, and rod combination what we're gonna do is we're gonna reuse a couple of the components we're gonna reuse the wrist pin and the wrist pin um, retainers okay so I'm gonna grab the pin I'm gonna turn it and pull it out okay be careful don't bend these don't try not to bend them too much try also not to lose them because they kind of pop out sometimes All right I'm gonna remove the other side too so I'm going to get in there with this, grab onto it, turn and pull out. See, I almost lost this one. <laughs> All right. Okay, and now for my wrist pin, um, I should be able to use just anything to, from one side to pop it out the other side. I don't know if it slides out easier from one way or the other. There we go. So you see that popped out. Connecting rod comes out. I don't know if this is good or not. It's hard to tell. I mean, it's not broken. But it's hard to tell if there's any little bend or twist to them. So, usually leave them aside. So, and the piston I know is definitely no good. So, I'm going to definitely put that aside with like the back bearing. Okay. But, yep, the wrist pin or connecting rod pin, your two wrist pin, um, your two retainers. I'm gonna reuse those. Now you can buy new ones of those if you like, but they don't really go bad, you know, so it's not real, no real point to replace them if you don't have to. Okay, so what I'm gonna get out first is my connecting rod and my motor, uh, my piston. Now remember, the part that has the cutaway is the front of the engine. It's gonna go to give a relief on the crankshaft on when it goes to the high point uh, at the low center point you're gonna see that the uh, counterweight here you know it needs to have a relief for that so the the cutout here is for that um the back being straight like this with that just kind of like a u-cut it's fine because in the back cover there's a u-cut there that this kind of seats into when the piston is at its lowest point all right so that's the front we got to find the front of the connecting rod now again, the connecting rod, one side has the bevel, right there, you see that little bevel? It's kind of rounded almost. 
on the other side is a straight cut. Okay, I know it's hard to tell because that almost looks like there's a bevel, but when you look at it compared to the other side, that really has that bevel. It's rounded off. So the rounded off portion is the front. So the front is going to match with the front of the piston, meaning the beveled edge and the cutaway. That has to line up or your piston is not going to seat in right. Okay, let me just double check before I line this up. Okay, the wrist pin goes back in. Hopefully I'm getting this in the shot. Wrist pin goes back in. Okay. Now you don't have to push it all the way in. What I do is I leave a I leave a little gap in there. Because you can see there's the where the retainer goes into, there's a little groove in there. So what I do is I'll grab one of the retainers, retainer clips. Okay. Let's see if I can do this on video. It's easier when you don't have to do things on video. Okay, I'm gonna put that in there, twist, and kind of clip it in there, and hopefully it seats in right. Okay. Nope, so you see this side isn't seated in. Okay, and that bottom side is not seated in right. Okay, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to push the pin in and that should push it to seat that um, bottom part. So you see how it kind of swirls and this part, it's hard to tell but it didn't seat perfectly. Yeah, right there, you see the groove and then the pin's not in there. If I push this out, if I push this, this should push that and make a seat, which it did. So now it's, you can tell is that pin is in that groove. So you see where it's empty there and it's in the groove. You want to make sure that seats in properly. You need that to be seated in properly for, for it to not fall apart on you, you know, when it's spinning at 10,000 or whatever thousands of RPMs it does. So now with the other side, it gets a little more difficult because um, there's less room to work with, but it's the same thing. You kind of get it, um, kind of get the the open side in there, Hold on. and then kind of turn and get that. It compresses it by turning one a little to get that in there. Now these needle nose or these uh, little force that things are kind of too big, but. Okay, almost in there. This one side didn't clip in. Okay, and just push it in. There should be only enough room for the retainer to go into that groove. It shouldn't go beyond that groove. So let me make sure. Visually inspect it and make sure that that is the case right on both sides okay our piston and ring uh, piston and connecting rod are one piece now okay so we'll move on to the ring the ring comes in a nice little cardboard and plastic thing so that way it's less chance of it breaking inside of here um, be gentle with this now with the piston, what you'll notice is right there. Can you see that? There's a pin. And this is a good one. This is a, a solid pin instead of a, a round collar that they just squeeze in there. Okay, so it's less likely to slip or break. So there's that pin. And in the ring, there's actually, you'll see right there, there's a groove that when this compresses, gives enough room for a pin. See that? So you want to make sure that lines up. Okay? You know, be very careful putting this on. You don't want to bend this too much and break the piston ring. Okay, so we're gonna 
Just gonna gently try to get one side on and then work my way around and boop, there we go. So the piston ring is on the piston. You wanna make sure that that little thing lines up. So without it compressed, you can kind of spin it around and there you go. So there's that thing. So when it compresses, it'll seal itself and get in that groove so the piston ring doesn't move. Okay. All right, and which actually happens, um, here's the front of the piston. So a little bit off of it. So if you're looking at it, say um, the front of the piston is 12 o'clock, right? The center front of the piston is 12 o'clock. Then it's about 11 o'clock that the pin is located. Every piston could be different. I know with the 105s, that's all pretty much the same. What we're gonna do is just reverse the unassembly part, uh, the disassembly. I'm gonna put this together the same way. So um, bearings, crank is in there. I'm gonna slide my piston in there. Now remember, cutaway is the front, okay? Now you wanna slide this in without the sleeve because it gives you the room and the clearance to get the connecting rod hooked up to the crankshaft, just like that. Now here's the interesting part. With this thing top dead center, you have to look here and get that pin, the pin and the opening of the ring to be um, in the middle. So the opening and the pin, so the, the sorry, the ring opening, and right in the middle of that opening, you'll see the pin. Because what you're gonna do is when you start sliding this in, the way it's beveled here, it'll start compressing the ring, and then once it compresses, it'll basically seat the ring, and that's it. If you, if this is in the wrong spot and you seat it, you're gonna break your ring. So be careful with that, double check, take this nice and slow. So, and also know that this is keyed, right? There's an indentation here on the motor, on the crankcase, there's a little wrist, little pin there, right? You wanna key those together. So remember, top dead center, which means that the piston is at its highest point. I'm gonna hold it with my, see, it's gonna drop. I'm gonna hold it with my, my middle finger and my ring finger there. Make sure that this is, let me ah, get around the camera. Make sure that ring is good. Make sure my key area is good. And I'm gonna start sliding this thing on. Okay. Okay. So there we go. And I'm gonna slide this in. Making sure that the key is right. The key is important because all your exhaust ports and intake ports and all that stuff on the motor has to line up properly. Um, okay, I'm gonna flip it around. Final push down. I'm gonna make sure that's locked in there. So now this is done. Um, try not to crank the motor too much. There's no oil or any type of lubrication. You can, I just use actually some, you could use uh, like braking oil or um, I actually just put nitro fluid in there usually um, because with nitro fluid it'll it'll basically um, you know has lubrication in it so so that's good this is all set up I'm gonna put the carburetor back on actually before I put the carb on we're gonna we're gonna do the upgrade so at this point what we can actually do to move forward is I'm gonna put the head back on. Now the head has the shim already in there. I didn't remove the shim. I'm just gonna reuse it, should be fine. Um, and we'll get this on, so you'll see. HZ, but it's not. It's an HZ, it's gonna be an HZR. All right. Let's get that seated. Okay. That's seated nice and good. Um, I don't know if the, the motor has, I think it seats this way. I think the, uh, the label's all on the same side. I don't think it matters, but I just want to make, make sure I put it in the right way. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to tighten up those, um, 
six bolts on top. It's a 2.5 millimeter. Goblin tools, cool. Um, the way you want to do this is a hex pattern, like you tighten up wheels, okay? You don't want to go around in a circle. You want it to compress evenly. And what I actually do is I, I just drive them very lightly by hand, right? Go in cross pattern or star pattern, they say, okay? I'm not even torquing them down at all. So I'm, you, you can see I'm using my, my pointer finger and my thumb and just taking it nice and easy to get these to see. And then what I'm going to do is then I'm going to tighten them down in the same pattern. Then I go around one more time in a circular pattern once they're, once they're tightened down. Okay. Okay. So the last one I can start tightening them down. Okay, and then kind of make sure that they're torqued down and just go around the circle real quick. Just giving it a nice little, make sure they're snugged. And I'm not actually tightening them anymore. That the, When you tighten them in the star pattern, that should be the final tight down. But this is just to, to make sure that they're all even. Okay, the head is on there. My piston, everything's rebuilt in here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop the video here and we're going to come back and do the HDR upgrade. Now, just real quick, the reason I'm not putting the finishing the rebuild by putting the back cover and the, the car back on is I'm going to have to take these apart to do the upgrade anyway, so why create the double one? Uh, normally, if you weren't doing any HDR upgrades and this is already an HDR, you would be already done. You just put those back on, you're, you're good to go. All right, thanks for watching.